For Comedy Hype News, I'm Terrence Sims. The art of theater and the host of notable plays that have come from it is almost a never ending list. Since the days of Shakespeare, and even with the advent of other forms of entertainment, plays have stood the test of time. With the growing popularity of movies, particularly in the 1980s, the medium of plays did not simply go away, but the idea of bringing some to the big screen became a buzzing idea. August Wilson's 1987 Broadway play titled Fences would prove to be the production that went well beyond the stage, garnering such attention. After gaining a Pulitzer Prize, the Tony Award, and a Dramatic Critics Circle Award along with other 500 sold out shows, Wilson's play was deemed a masterpiece and anybody with the eye of theater wanted to be involved. Naturally, as the play was set in 1957 and dealt with the man whose life changed after playing in the Negro Leagues, budding actor Eddie Murphy thought the role would serve as a great chance for him to touch on a black issue that truly mattered on the biggest platform. This interest by Eddie prompted Paramount Pictures to purchase the rights to the play for a whopping $1 million in 1987. At the time, it seemed to be a foregone conclusion that the film would see Eddie Murphy in the role of Troy Maxson's son, Corey, and the film would stand as a moment in history for black art as a whole. However, like any great story, the path to the big screen would prove to have its own share of issues. From the director of the film to the purchase of the rights for Eddie Murphy and beyond to the eventual release of the film in 2016, 29 years after the rights were bought, many wondered how a play that touched so many across the globe could have taken so long to hit the big screen. Here's why Denzel Washington replaced Eddie Murphy in Fences. Eddie Murphy was coming right off Beverly Hills Cop 2 and wanted to make the drama as soon as possible. John Bregley, yo, Wilson's attorney at the time, spoke about the eventful first meeting between he and Murphy. According to the New York Times, Bregley said, Eddie was incredibly respectful and deferential to August. He was in all of the property. When Murphy and August Wilson finally met, Wilson's one request was to have a black director for the film. Murphy's response, I don't want to hire nobody just because they're black. Wilson replied, Neither Neither do I. The meeting took place back in 1990 and will be famously referenced in the October edition of Spin Magazine later that year. Wilson and Murphy agreed that hiring black was not solely about the color, but about culture and having actors telling their own stories instead of someone who was a stranger to the culture. Barry Levinson, who was coming off multiple Academy Award winning films, attended the play in 1990 and like others was in awe of the story. However, he backed out of the project completely upon learning of the Wilson's demands. His lawyer echoed these sentiments in a New York Times interview you saying, I think Paramount felt intimidated by August's demand for a black director and frustrated but ultimately respectful. It was a very uncomfortable period, but no one was going to force anything down August's throat. Similarly, Wilson's widow Constanza Romero elaborated on her late husband's demands for a black director. The people at Paramount were walking on fire. August had a way of making people hear him and be scared of going against his wishes. And he was not going to be one of those writers who melt into the background. The fact that Wilson was often told that there was no black director qualified for the project frustrated him. The skills of black lawyers, doctors, dentists, accountants, and mechanics are often greeted with skepticism. Even from other blacks, because Wilson wasn't getting what he wanted, he decided to wait. Paramount Pictures had no legal obligation to fulfill Wilson's request for a black director, but still respected his wishes. An artist from the Boston Globe states that one of Wilson's favorite films was The Godfather, directed by Francis Ford Coppola, partly because the film shows Italian Americans in front of the camera and behind it as well. Due to the desire to have someone of the culture pioneering his project, Wilson's lawyer heeded the help of the film's producer, Warrington Hutland. Being that Hutland was also the president of Black Filmmakers Foundation, he was able to get sit-downs with notable directors of the time who went on to have great success. Bill Duke, Spike Lee, Lloyd Richards, and John Singleton. Problems began to arise with the growing narrative being the difficulty of producing this type of film, and even more so the lack of respect given to black directors at the time. The issue caused Bill Duke to back out after having met Wilson in Pittsburgh to discuss further details. Spike Lee continued his independent angle, focusing on his own films that he felt would be breakouts, and John Singleton didn't believe he'd be respected as a director of a such film. It's worth noting that Singleton was coming off his directorial debut in Boys in the Hood, leaving Wilson to believe he'd be perfect to tell such a story so similar in message. The hesitance came with great reasons as historically the industry at the time would have white directors essentially telling black stories in ways that angered many, but little seemed to be changing. 
As the months grew to years, with Wilson desperately trying to get together a sufficient crew for the film, so did Eddie Murphy and the reality of him playing a 17-year-old boy. By 1997, Murphy and his company had the rights to fences bought by Scott Rudin, who ironically was a top producer working at the same lot as Paramount. It was through this connection that the play and working script would fall into the hands of arguably one of the greatest black actors of all time, Denzel Washington. With the death of August Wilson on October the 2nd, 2005, the film coming together seemed even more unlikely and it wasn't until 2009 that Scott Rudin would actually present the piece to Washington. During a 2017 interview with IndieWire, the 55-year-old Washington revealed that the actual reading of the play was what truly piqued his interest. Washington spoke saying, when I read the play and saw Troy Mack 53 I thought oh I better hurry I'm thinking of the young me watching Jones and I realized I better hurry if I want to do this play reading it again for the first time not even again made me really want to do it so I called Scott and said let's do the play with the success of the play during this remastered version of the original Washington found himself doing other plays for some years before returning to fences with full intention of filming in late 2014 into 2015 after a deal was inked with HBO for Washington to remake other Wilson plays into films the reality of fences on the big screen was back on the table for Washington he did not do the play just to be in the movie he realized he had another chance to improve things in the movie in addition to improving on the live play washington credits choosing actors that are familiar with feature films as helping him to direct in ways that even surprised him as the film touches on so many different aspects of life from the role of the father to mother to son washington the role of troy allowed him to show that in life many people mean well but can only take you as far as they've been Eddie Murphy's absence for Denzel Washington's presence for many was still a home run years later and touching lives. The film will go on to earn over $60 million proven to be a commercial success against a $24 million budget. While August Wilson's death meant he never got to see the film, he's likely looking down very proudly. Without knowing the history of the play coming to theaters, Washington managed to serve as the black director Wilson had yearned for and characters that truly brought the message to life. August Wilson wanted Fences to speak to a generation of people that wanted more for themselves while dealing with family issues that were often seen or talked about in the industry. The work of Washington has been appreciated both publicly and privately via the film's Academy Award nomination. The host of black filmmaking groups that had their own people as part of the film and a path to more films like it to produce for years to come having stories for us told by us. Stay up to date with the latest news and comedy by subscribing here to our YouTube channel. Follow Comedy Hype across all social media and look out for original content on our new streaming service at ComedyHype.com. For Comedy Hype News, I'm Terrence Sims.